What's your name? Where we at right now, homie? God said feed the people. So it's lunchtime. We're in the Florida Project. I'm Buff, man. Buff? Yes. Oh, yeah, it's right. What's up, man? I'm Bosco 507, man. Where are you from? I'm from out of Selmore, but you know, I'm out here with my marriage. You know, we feeding the people in Florida right now. So Bosco, you it. said? Bosco, Forever 7. Oh, all right. It was him, man. Look, where the name Buff come from? Oh, man, my brother gave me that name when I was young, man. I was like, kind of like, probably like in a in a seventh grade or something like that. And you know, they had Big Buff from the Fat Boys, the big old fat one. His name was Big <laughs> yeah. Buff, you know, and he used yeah. to eat all the time. And I used to eat all the time. So uh, homie was like, I'm going to start calling you Buff, right? He started calling me Buff, Dad. That shit just stacked forever, you know? I feel that. I understand that. But look, how was childhood coming up? But, but before we get to that, I'm skipping the question. You from there? You from the home? Yeah, I'm from the project. That's yeah. indeed, man. Florida Project. One of the Florida Projects. Very own. Right. Yeah. yeah born and raised back here. Born yeah. All raised. my life. Yes. All right. Not, a, not the next question. How was your childhood like coming up around Man, there, it bro? was crazy. You know what I'm saying? And like the average kid in the ghetto, bro. You know, all kind of things was happening, man. I didn't witness, bear witness to all kind of different things as a kid that a kid don't even supposed to be bearing witness to. And oh, he was right. dying over those, you know, all kind of different things, bro, walking through the project. Walking from Elvis Street to Congress Street, man, you could have saw anything. And I saw a lot of things. Yeah, what, what years are we talking about? We talking about, like, the late 80s, um, like, from 85, 86, 87, 88, you know, all those years there. In the early 90s, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was, it was like that. All right, how many siblings you had? You mentioned something about a brother. Yes, I got seven. I got seven on. Um, my mama got seven children. You All know, right. my little brother, he dead. Rest in peace, black the guy. He right. dead. You know what I'm saying? But all the rest of my brothers, they still living. You know what I'm saying? My sisters, they still living. We still thriving, you know? All right, how about you, bro? You got any siblings? Yeah, I got a few siblings. I'm the only child for my mama, but my daddy, you know, Papa was a Rolling Stone, so I got two sisters and two brothers from my, uh, on my daddy's side. What part of the Southern Ward are you from? I'm from Boscoville. Boscoville? Yeah, that's, that's that's downtown. That's in the Southern around Dillard University. You know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, what's that like? Yeah, I'm about to say yeah, Gentilly, yeah. That Gentilly type area, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's the Southern Ward, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, how was your childhood coming up in that area? I mean, you know, uh... I ain't come from no broken family, you know what I'm saying? I had eleven, I had a, I had a two parent home, you know. I had eleven mother, eleven father, and things like that. But you know, I chose the route I went. You know, I can, I can stand here today and say that I was a follower. Right, you know what I'm right. saying I wanted to be down, so you know, I followed in into a lot of paths and things that I shouldn't have been fucking with. You know what I'm saying? Man, so, enough, like, okay. yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you know, so I mean, what was your stopping grounds at? Like, you know what I'm saying for you? Like when you got old and on your own, you do what you was. Oh man, I got older than on my own. I was in I was in the prison when I got older than on my own, bro. You know, I mean, you know, before right. you got to that, you know, in the, oh. the flow, the way y'all used to, you know, oh, stop at. I used to be floor. hanging in the whole project, right? Congress, uh, Elva, Bartholomew, all over the project. You know, you were from the okay, project. Man. You really was like in the project for real, give all little, over. All right, give me a little history about the flow of the project. You did for anybody who don't know, you did. Man, the flow of the project is downtown in the nine wall. I'm gonna say it's in the nine wall. But we you know we always say we are the Florida project. Everybody know that's a part of the nine wall. Call the streets from another project, which is the desire, you know, and the Florida project, but we always was cool back here, man. We did a lot of chilling, you know what I'm saying, or whatever like that coming up, you know, in the gang hustling, you know, all kind of different things, bro. You know, the same like typical for every project in New Orleans, man. Okay. Right. Give me a little history on your neighborhood, bro. I mean, you know, I'm from Boscoville, man. You know, most people know about the, the mausoleum where Soldier Slim got, you know, buried at. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people buried in the mausoleum right there. That's Boscoville right there. Oh, you know all right. Saying? Where Slim buried at. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, coming up in my neck of woods, it was typical, you know what I'm saying? I'm from out of seven, but I was on the street, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I seen a lot of shit, bro. You know, drugs, you know, guns, murder, all this shit was happening in my neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. you know, as a youngin', you know, coming off the porch, you know what I'm saying? I jumped off the porch and I jumped straight into the streets. My daddy died when I was 14, you know what uh -huh. I'm saying? So it was just me and moms at home. You know, I found a, I, I picked up the streets as my second pouch, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. you know, I went to run in the streets, bro. You know, one thing led to another. And for you know it, I was into this, I was into that, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, my neighborhood kind of like shaped and molded me into the person that I am today. So, you know, you know I'm proud saying? of where I'm from, man. You know what I'm saying? Like. You know, it had its, it had. I had my tough times, I had my ups, I had my downs, but you know, through it all, you know what I'm saying, we live and we learn, you know, like, 
the seven world is big. You know what I'm saying? We got front of town. I'm from Boscoville, but we got front of town. We got back of town. We got the project. And, yeah. You know, and just because I'm from Boscoville, I roam all through the seven. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you could have caught me back. You know, I got kidnapped front of town. Yeah. I got I got shot, you know what I'm saying, back of town. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I just stayed in a project. So, you know, I'm a real seven world nigga. Real you know what I'm talk, So, Pump, I mean, you feel like they get wrong? Let me get this question out right. You feel like growing up in the projects, they gave folks like a bad reputation for growing up in the projects, especially like back in the day, you did? We definitely got a, a bad <laughs> reputation, man. You know, just by the fact that you was out of the project, everywhere you went at, they thought some shit was about to happen, right? Yeah. You know, you know, or we we venture over to like different areas, going by girls or going in other neighborhoods, off the dump, they be like, they go them boys from the project. They yeah. come around, it was foolish, there's some mess right there. We might have just been hanging in the neighborhood, going around the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, we got painted that way, all that school, everything, every, always, it was always, they go them boys out the project, the people out the project, yeah, it was like crazy then. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he from the streets and you from the projects, what would they say is the difference, like from cats in the end of being raised in the streets and being raised in the projects, like, Ain't no mean, difference. It ain't really, ain't no, really difference. no difference. Ain't no difference. It's all the ghetto. Yeah, yeah, it's all the oh, ghetto. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. Project. You know what I mean? Right. You know, I ain't grew up in a project, but you know the same shit that happened on my street corners happened in their project hallways. The it's same a, shit it, that happened in their project driveways happened on my, you know, in my now street driveways. You know what I'm saying? So right, I mean, right. it's one and the same, and it's like he says, it's all ghetto. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. Like. Is you know the mentality saying? different? Like, you know, no, same no, mentality, no, same, 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 yeah, it's yeah, same, the same shit. You know, I didn't, when I was younger, I yeah. probably didn't know a lot of that, but when I went to prison, I met dudes from all over, bro, right. and the yeah. story was the same. Right. You know, dudes from Tree Pool, dudes from Bad Ruiz, dudes uh, from all over, but their story was the same no matter where they were from. Right. They yeah. had the same kind of story, grew up the same kind of ways. Right, right. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's that's sure. But they say projects were designed and intended for low income households that was trying to, you know, that was trying to save up to be homeowners. But, you know, people didn't feel a need after they got comfortable. Did you feel like a lot of people got comfortable in the projects and didn't feel like they needed to, to move? You know what I'm saying? And Definitely. Like, did they create like a family inside of the, you know? You ever heard, you ever heard when they say, you know what, you call a project a project because it's the project, it was a project. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it what it was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The system was set up like that. Right. The system was designed for the work, high work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For people to get comfortable inside of that. You know, the definition it may give may was something else. But right. what it was actually designed for, when you put people in certain situations, man, yeah. people who are in power, they know the outcome. They know what it's right. gonna be. If you in a in an area with low education, people don't understand what right. better. It's infested with crack. It's infested with drugs. Right. People seeing fast money. You got people that ain't never have money, so now they seeing fast money. Mm -hmm. You know, and they know money buys all kind of different things. You know, right. mm -hmm. so that's what you're doing. You're a consumer. You learn consumer ways. You learn all kind of bad habits and all kind of things. What that gonna do? Just keep you in the same circle. You may move out of your parents' house, move into your own project. Move right. into your own ghetto, right? Because right. now you feel like I'm comfortable in a ghetto. I ain't comfortable in these other areas. Yeah. Man, a sister was set up to hold us back, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, we just I ain't understand it. no better. Right, right. I feel that. Now, who were some of the elders you looked up to around that, like influence wise? You did, man. During that time, yeah. Anybody that was older than me, man, I had respect for them. Yeah. You know, we told we we learned respect at a young age to respect all the guys that was older than me, man. Right. Man, when I when I was in jail, I used to be encountering some guys who was older than me and you know out of the project. And they used to be like, man, I ain't lying, bro. I was kind of leery of you when we was on the street. And I was shocked to hear that. I'm like, what? Man, I gave the utmost respect to the people that was older than me. I don't care who they were. I don't care if they was in the game, if they wasn't in the game. That's just what I, what I was taught by coming up. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of those brothers, man, ain't no way in the world I would have done any kind of harm to them or you know, let anything happen to him if I could have prevented it in any kind of way. You right. know what I'm saying? You know, so it was like, I, I looked up to all kind of different people, but they didn't have no, like, no certain people. But my brother, Evans, he was the one who kind of gave me the game, kind of molded me and, you know, gave me, you know, for as the street wise, all right. kind of different things. But they had other cats that I sat back and just watched them and admired them also, you know? Right, 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 yeah. Right. What about you, Bosco? You know, any influences? Influences I mean, coming up? I was mostly just influenced by cats in the street that right. that that 
was was showing me things that I thought I wanted. You right. know what I'm saying? I was influenced by, like he said, the older guys, but older guys that had the clothes, that had the clothes, that you know, they had all the things that I didn't have as a child. You know, right, things right. that I'm looking up like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want this, I want that. How can I do this? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and then finding out how to achieve in these things and seeing that it's, you know, it's street ethics, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's just going to draw you in. Well, shit. We're high schools, y'all. What's up, man? Man, we want the Nichols. We want the Francis T. Nichols, but who they call Douglas been now. Right. We've been knowing each other since, since high school. Right. Since since high school. school. Yeah, that's where we, we met at. High school that's together, where we met. We got expelled together. We got put out together. Yeah, you know what we what got put out of high school together. Fight, 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 fight with some dudes from all across the canal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So who else y'all used to run to? I mean, run to, run with, like, coming up. All kind of different people. All kind of different people. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, him bumped that Nichols. Right. right, you know, but I wind up at Nichols because I I went to Kennedy. I told them on the seven. I went to Kennedy and John Mack. Yeah. So my little partner Chester go just a dear rest in peace, Chester. Yeah. Chester got put out of Kennedy for shooting at the security guard, and they sent him to Nichols. Damn. Well, he had the seven. He like, man, look, they about to send me to Nichols. I'm gonna be the only nigga to sit, come to come to come to Nick with me. <laughs> you did yeah. so boom. I go to Nick and day, me and him over there. We politicking. You know what I'm saying? I meet I meet this dude. I remember the first day I met him. I ain't really like him. No. <laughs> no. The first day I met him. I ain't mm-hmm. like him because the first, what I heard him say, like you just heard him say, his brother named Evans. My, my first, my first uh, meeting of him was they already told me who he was. I already know who Buff was, but before we actually had a conversation, he was talking, and I walked up. He was like, "Man, nigga can't fuck with me. Nigga can't do me. Now I'm Evans, brother. Nigga don't know." <laughs> but he the, he the shit. He hot. But yeah, I don't know who Evans is. I don't know who he is. I don't know nothing at this time. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, but I thought you had a problem with Evans. Like, I ain't oh, had no problem. But I'm just, just you know, I'm just, I'm just the type of nigga like I'm a street nigga. Like, oh, no, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like this nigga. Yeah. Like he was a little too hype for me. I did, like I need to see what's happening. But come to find out, he was hype in real life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know, for next thing you know, man, him fucking some niggas up together. Uh-huh. You know, so yeah, it was all good. So what was y'all into, man? I asked who y'all used to run with, what y'all was into, you know what I'm Oh, saying? during that time, man, you know, we was in the game, yeah, bro. You know, you know, you in the game, bro. You know, we talking about 92, 93, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we was young, man. You know what I'm saying? So we in the streets, heavy. It's all streets. It's all drugs. Ain't no job. It's whatever it takes. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, I'm coming to school. We going to school in the rock runners and shit. Y'all lose any close friends coming up? Like doing in the streets, yeah. Dog just did. My partner Chester, whose name I just told you, I lost him while we was at Nick. Right, oh, same yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. That same year, we lost, right. I lost him that year. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, I went to Nichols because of him, and he died while we was there. Oh, he God. got killed while we was there. Yeah, my cousin, you know, Cheddar Black, man. Rest in peace, Cheddar Black. My little brother, Black the God, Elo. Man, I lost so many people man, to the game. Real, to it's like, a shame, you know, bro. You know what I'm saying, man? The street that took a whole bunch, bro. You know, yeah, definitely. You we know, all, me and Chad Black, we ran together like it. every day. So you said that's like nine to two, nine to three, y'all said like No, that? um when I was I was locked up, um I got locked up in ninety four. Yeah, I got locked up. I got sentenced to life, man. I was sentenced to die in prison. Oh, that's the year yes. you were sentenced? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I was 18 years old, man. So what years you was active before then? Like, man, before all then? the other years before that, <laughs> as a young boy. <laughs> you know, I had to win the jail. I had went to jail, like, back to back to back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, bro, you know, they was apprehending me for things that I ain't even knew nothing about. They ain't had nothing to do. But thank God I was able to come out on a lot of those charges, bro. But this time right here, I got convicted of second degree murder, man. I was sentenced to die in prison. They said I would never get out. They lied, though. Yeah. They definitely lied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They definitely lied. Not a lot of different they... plans. All right. So uh, what kind of effect did drugs have on the community growing up in both yeah. Seven Ward and the Night Ward? You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I know y'all got stories to tell. See, bro, I mean, you know, bro, drugs had an effect on, you know, just, you know, no, on the community. Yeah. Just, I I can't even just say it had an effect on the seven wall the night. Well, I just got to see the whole New Orleans, the community as a whole. Right. Because, you know, like, it was drug. It was, you know, this is the early, we're talking about the early stages of the crack era. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So we got to, we got to keep in mind what we're talking about. So everybody just getting off into this shit. And it's really a free fall. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't really got no, you know, everybody just trying to do their own thing. It's trying to, People trying to gather a structure with it, but we talking about drugs. So they, is there really a structure? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I seen people, you know, I seen, you know, my partner, A.T., who was just, you know, she was healthy and looking good and had a house, you know, six months later, a year later, you know what I'm saying? She walking around, she homeless, she barefoot, she strung out, you know. Right. I seen crack, I seen drugs destroy a whole bunch of people's lives, man. Right. Break up a whole lot of homes. I saw it right. destroy a lot of kids, you know what I'm saying? I saw a lot of kids, young you know what I'm saying? Using drugs, just period. 
you know, just all type of drugs. I had my own experiences with drugs myself. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. I can't sit here and act like I ain't, I wasn't on both right. sides. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Like I had my own experiences with that myself. So, right. you know, right. like yeah. it had a big effect on a lot of people, bro. Drugs destroyed our community, man. Period. Yeah. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? We didn't know any better than, bro. But crack ran through this project like crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I saw people, like he said, man, people that you once grew up respecting, now they on crack, they going to store for people. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Running I'm talking about you got people issue. walking from the Florida Project, the St. Claude, the churches, for somebody, a younger brother, you yeah, know what I'm just saying? Just to yeah, just to get a hit or whatever like that, bro. Right. I started getting loaded on heroin as, at a young age, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I, I really was getting loaded for real. Oh, that happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was a real junkie at 18. You did what I'm saying? I got high in real life. That's you know what, what I'm you saying? You think they had something to do play a part with the uh, the temp murders and all that? You yes, know? I was on I was on the murder. I hope I was on the temp murder, uh, but I was on the murder. Yeah, yeah all people but, y'all uh, on, on Tech Nine show. I mean, that's yeah. Tech Nine, um, Lil Yash show. You did yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, that definitely um that definitely had effect, man. I had a yeah. drug habit. You know what uh, I'm saying? So you know, I had to do things to kind of keep my habit up. You know, but at the same time. I, I'm trying to keep up with all kind of different things. And yes, that definitely has something to do with the drug, man. Yeah. Man, drugs affected my mind. Already my mind wasn't fully developed right. at 18. Yeah. I'm already, you know, got peer pressure. I don't know this at the time. I don't know nothing about peer pressure. I don't understand that my mind not fully developed. Yeah. But guess what, man? Drugs help my shit be less fully developed. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I right. thought I was a great thinker. Yeah. But I wasn't, man. I didn't know. It's a whole lot of things about life that I didn't know. I didn't understand, you know. And drugs ain't did nothing but had them all fucked up, bro. What's your thoughts about the drugs now? Oh, you know man. Saying? Shit, bro. Thank like, God. It ain't really crank no more, but it's fitting on. Now. Yeah, yeah, thank God. Thank God that while I was in prison, they t he took that away from me. You know what I'm saying? I never used another drug again. I don't care what kind. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, but seeing an effect that the drugs are still having on people in the community, all yeah. kind of different things, bro. You know, I work at the Orleans Public Defender's Office, bro. So, uh -huh. you know, there's a lot of people I see, like drugs, going to work, uh, at work, or whatever like that, through court, that was affected by drugs. They got guys that got out of prison who was doing drugs prior to prison, came home, still on drugs, inside of prison, inside of Angola, inside of the maximum security prison in, in Louisiana, they have a drug problem. Right. Yeah. They got drug programs inside of prison yeah. that was built inside of prison. During the pandemic, I had friends in prison that died because of drugs. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So they got a so, drug problem inside the maximum right. um, so, security prison. Yeah, so, indeed. you know, drugs, man, definitely, man, they're going to always have an effect on our people, on communities like this. It's going to always happen, bro. Right, right. Y'all still see people on crack to this day? Like, a lot of, like, but not yeah. worse yeah, than they still I, got I thought, I mean, I thought Rox wasn't out no more. That's well, what Rock's I still out. Yeah, Rock's still, still out. They still out. Rock's, they got people still, still smoke crack. I'm like, still I don't know still When I came crack, home, I thought Rock wasn't out no more. Yeah, yeah. But I, I done ran across a few people, and I'm like, it man, ain't fluent. It, it, might it might not be as fluent. It might not be as fluent as you as it once was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. We're dealing with a serious, you know, heroin fitting epidemic right now. But um, yeah, that's what man, I was it's definitely, about. it's like definitely stood out to you. More like pills and shit. Yeah, all that shit. But you know, like you gotta think about this, man. You know, like we got a lot of drugs. So drugs now, in when we was coming up. It was bad to use drugs, yeah. but the the, the oh. transition in a generation yeah. has allowed people to feel like recreational drug use is not really using drugs. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, it. you know, we got 17, 18 year olds that pop pills all day, but they don't feel like they got no problem right. until they don't have them no more. Rapping about it. You see what I'm saying? You know, yeah. uh, you know, right. just you know, niggas right. that's you know shooting dope or doing whatever they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. so. You know, it's still going on, bro, and it's even more rapid right now, you know what I'm saying? Because of just society, the community, the way the world is right now, man. Like, everything, is, to it. everything is overdone. Right. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Everything is overdone. Nobody yeah. do things in the limit and the capacity oh, it should shit, be done. Nobody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you pop pills, you pop too many pills. If you smoke weed, you drink too much weed. If you fuck with alcohol, you drink too much. You know, everything is done in excess now. Right, right. Yeah, I feel that. Right. I'm saying, knowing about walls and other walls, like the Cali or the Magnolia, was the night water, the Florida projects at eyes with any other areas in the city when you was growing up? 
man, when we was growing up, we was at odds with each other. <laughs> each you know other? what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, you had the Florida Project, you had the Project called the Track. But most of all of us grew up together. Yeah. We still like used to be fighting and stuff. It wasn't that serious back right, then. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that serious where we was actually trying to kill each other. We might have did a little scuffling yeah. or something like that. But you know, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't that serious during that time. And you know, you know, anywhere you go, you're gonna have, you know, you think you out of the projects so or you think you bad. They're gonna have other people out of other projects who think they bad. So it's have a potential to going out wherever you go at the side of the uh -huh. city. And we all gonna be at the same places. All of us gonna be thinking we fresh and all that, trying to highlight all the women yeah, or whatever yeah, like yeah, that. And next thing you know, you might be in a scuffle with a nigga from some, anywhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it was back then. Yeah, yeah. See, I had this question way later on down the line, but I think you answered it. You, I see how much time you did it on where you where they had you at. Oh man, I did 27 and a half years inside of prison. I was in Angola, Angola? Louisiana State Prison. Yeah, I was out of that the whole time. Yeah. What yeah. was your experience like in prison for a person who never been like? Man, you know, as it relates to the physical part of prison, yeah, it wasn't about nothing, bro. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But the mental aspect of prison, that's kind of like the roughest thing that people don't understand about prison, bro. Middle, oh, yeah, right, the right, mental right. aspect, bro. You know, being it's it's it's, it's abnormal, yeah, to be isolated away from society, yeah, for like so that. many years. Right. You know what I'm saying? I so like you become that. institutionalized. Right. You know, people don't understand that that. You know, you're away from everything. You're in a controlled environment. Yeah, you right. know, they feed you three times a day. You don't have to pay bills. The job that you're doing, a slave job, you're on a slant, and go to a slave plantation. Right. That's where you were at on a slave. You're you picking cotton. You're doing all kind of different things. And then, bam, you're back in society. So imagine after being gone, being gone all that time, now you're back in society trying to adjust to this new world, right. the internet world. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. The new people Sound doing the new things. Computers. Right. Yes. Definitely. So prison right. severely handicap you in all kind of different ways, bro. Right. It definitely do, man. It destroy you if you allow it to. That's real tough. That's real tough. Are you um you witness like any fight stabbings, rapes and all that crazy shit. I ain't like never that? witnessed no rape. <laughs> but I witnessed <laughs> fights. Yeah. I don't you know, I was in the dome when a dude yeah. got killed in the dome. Right. Dude beat a, a brother um brains out. With, yeah. with some uh, a rock and a sock, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Dude actually beat a brother brain out. Dude, yeah. the dude was convicted of uh, manslaughter for that. But um, yeah, I witnessed fights. I witnessed jugs. I was another dome and another dude got jugged. Yeah, I was in a dome with dude got jugged. You know, that just happened. That's just typical in prison. Typical you know what I'm saying? Some things typical happen when you life. got men, you know, locked up. Jugs before too? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you yes. yes, most definitely. Where you was at? Uh, shit, Winfield Hunts. DCI, I mean, I just come home in 20, man. I had 15 flat by the grace of Allah. I'm standing here right now, you know what I'm saying? I did five and a half, man. Yeah, that's you what's know, up. That's what's up, I, They passed some laws that allowed all nonviolent offenders to come home after serving 25% of their time. So, you know. Yes, indeed. I'm here, you know what I'm saying? Put me in position, and I'm here, but, um, yeah, man, I did multiple Josephs, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, you know, it took, it took for me to really, you know, they say you can doing the same shit over and over and expecting a different result is insanity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I did five yeah. Josephs. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Right now, it's actually, I've been out, I just made September the 9th, made four years that I've been home. Mm -hmm. This is actually the longest I've been home consecutively since 1998. Oh, right, I'll tell. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, you know, and <clears throat> in this short period, this, this four years that I've been home, I've achieved more in the four years not in the streets and I achieved all the years prior when I was free and I was in the streets. So being in jail a lot like that, did you, was y'all able like to, you know, have what? children and things like that when no, y'all was in the I had a I had a kid before I went to jail. Oh yeah? I, was son, yeah, I got a child son. when I came home. Yeah. You came home? Yeah. Uh, y'all got good relationships? Everything all great? We all right, bro, but it could be better. Just imagine, bro, if you know, yeah. you wasn't that doing that informative years. Bro, I got locked right. up before my kid was born. Right. Yeah, so uh -huh. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying. I, you know, I we ain't have no. I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying. It, it was a relationship through mail, through visits, through you know, right, from, right. in the crucial times of his life, bro. I wasn't there, man. Right. I was locked up in prison. You know how a kid gonna understand that? Well, you say you had a son. Yeah, I got a son. Oh, all right. Yeah. So he adult now, right? Yeah, he adult now. Yeah. So y'all get to kick it and run it like yeah, grown, yeah, not man. like we're supposed to. But, no. you know, sometimes, you know, it's still, you know, he brings things from there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of repairing, bro. Yeah. 
yeah, that right. has to happen. You know what I'm saying, bro? Right. And it's happening slowly but surely. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. I love my son. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, you know, that's just life, bro. Right, right. But I sure we see what you into. You be proud of Right. You know he definitely he told me that. Into. Yeah, he know what I'm into. So, right, yeah, right. he, you know, he told me that. You know, he's proud of me. All right. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. You say you got um, a daughter? You say yeah, that? I just had a daughter. My daughter. I came home at 20. I just oh, had a right. daughter in 22. She's going on two. She'll be three in February. You know what I'm oh, saying? All right. You started late yeah, like you me then. I started late. You know what I'm saying? So, I yeah, got a four to five year old. About to be 40 years old around this bit. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. So, oh, so a fresh start. Where are we are now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. God said feed the people. It's lunchtime. So it's yeah. lunchtime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, know, like you know, and that means that, man, you give the people everything that you have. Right. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing for you. All the knowledge, all the experience, all the things that I have, bro, I try to give it to the younger generation, bro. The people that's coming behind me, or the older generation, it don't matter. People who haven't experienced what I experienced, yeah. I try to tell them about my experience, not glorify my experience, but um, taking it as a learning tool, a learning mechanism, or something like that to kind of like let people know that, look, man, you don't need to go through what I go through to know what I know. I'm going to let you know it now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I'm always trying to feed the people in every way possible, man. It's always lunchtime. Where you go speak at? Cause you know, man, I just been speaking at all kind of different <laughs> places. I done been at Harvard. Yeah. I done been at Yale. I done been at UCLA. Right. I done yeah. been at oh, Virginia. Man, right. I done been all over speaking. Right. Tulane. Feeding the people. Oh, in real life. oh, Loyola. I just was at Loyola last week. You know, I done been all over speaking to people. But they got other places that I'm going to speak to people. So you know, name a place that I haven't been. Right. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah. You seem like a man on a mission. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely on a mission, man. Well, how important is it helping that risk youth? You know what I'm saying? The, the man, that's that very right important, man. That's, yeah. that's very important. The children, the future. Right. We can't give up on the youth, man. People right. want to give up on the youth, saying they out here doing this, that, and the 54, but what about the parenting? Right. You yeah. know, what you doing? You know what right. I'm saying? You got to play a part in it if you're a parent, mm -hmm. bro. You know, every parent wants the best thing for their for their kid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the youth, we can't give up on them. We got to pour into them, man. We got to build relationships with them. We got to build bonds with them. We got to build with them. You know what I'm saying? We can't right. let nobody else. You, 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 how you gonna let somebody else read the chair? How you gonna let the system read them, man? You let the system read them, they gonna come home. They gonna be more destroyed than they were before they go into prison. Yep. So you know what I'm saying? So we got to build with the children. We got to build with the younger generation. I feel that. I feel that. I heard you say something about um helping. Hold up, man. Let me let me bring my youngin. Let me bring my youngin out here. Yeah, <laughs> bro. Yeah, man. Tell them who you is, man. Why be tough? Why detail? Yeah. What's that? Where you from? Chilling. Round away. Round away? Yeah. What you do? You look like a little rapper or something, bro. What's up? <laughs> huh? I ain't a rapper. I be round a rapper. <laughs> yeah, you be round a rapper? Round a rapper. Oh, all right. What's your relationship with these two brothers right now? Oh, all right. Tell them my first time being bro. Oh, all right. All right. I had another question. Like, you see, you be helping the ex cons and felons who come home struggling, trying to find their way. How y'all on? Definitely, bro. Look, re entry. <laughs> Right. Reentry, yeah. look, I'm going to tell you something about reentry. People always tell about reentry this, reentry that. Yeah. Ain't nobody can tell you better about reentry than somebody who did reentry. Right. Yeah. You right. know so what I'm saying? I understand the same struggle. If a guy did 20 years in prison, yeah, I did 20 years in prison. Real? I'm home now. I'm functioning. Yeah. I can show him how to function. I can like, put yeah. him on top of things that was going on. I know what he need. I know what he missing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I try to point to their life. As much as I can, bro. Yeah. Show a brother how to use a phone. Show a brother how to go to Walmart and self checkout. They ain't had none of that. Right. 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 <laughs> For real. For real. For real. Yes. Definitely, bro. You don't know no better. You don't know what's going on, man. When look, when I first came home and I went to Walmart checkout, right? I'm in the checkout line. I'm like, man, what they mean? I don't know. I'm used to where. You give people money at, you know, once you pay people those. money, you know, you pay them money, you get All whatever right. the product is or whatever it is that you need. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's what I'm used to. Right. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, now, right. and they talking about your car. What car? I ain't uh, got no car. Got cash, yeah, yeah, I gave the woman my whole car. The woman like, look, please don't ever give nobody your entire credit card. Right. You know, I don't know what to do. <laughs> hey, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'm you like, by yourself? What's going on? Yeah, by myself. Definitely. 
Ah, I would have gone to Fifth Avenue. Ooh, that's Fifth Avenue. Yeah, yeah, the first place you go, I'd say it's Walmart because it's a one stop shop. Right. Right. That's all I heard when I was in prison. Walmart, Walmart, Walmart. So I want to go check it out. Right. We got to keep in mind, we've been in prison for all these years, man. You know what I'm saying? 10, 15 years. You know what I'm saying? Like that, man. Technology started growing. The world started changing. You know what I'm saying? Right. 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 You know, you take a brother, I, I was on a till with a brother that got discharged. He had the 30 flat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he rolled out from off the dawn with me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right before I went up for bro. And, you know, our conversation used to be like, used to be like, he said, man, they ain't had no cell phones when I left. Period. <laughs> I learned, tough, he man. learned how to work a cell phone in jail, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, he like, man, you know, when, when I left, they didn't have... They didn't have HD TVs and all, you know, they didn't have right. smart TVs. Right. He said, I call home, I did a face thing with my mama and she's touching the refrigerator. It's a smart refrigerator. <laughs> he shook, he don't know what's going yeah. on. Mom, why are you yeah. touching the refrigerator? Right. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta think like, you know, these things, you know, just, you know, it make you feel like you lost and you left behind when you come right. home and you seeing all this stuff and you don't know, you know, know what's going you on. Be lost, you be left you behind. Definitely be left you behind. Gotta catch so up. you need somebody to show you how to, you know, to catch yeah. up and definitely. to get, you know, get acquainted with these uh, what, things. What's that, um, that inmate, that dating shit? Popular when you was locked up, like the um, the chicks would be dating the inmates online and all that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I don't, I don't exactly know what you're talking about, but <laughs> uh, look, listen, you a guy, I'm... a guy in prison, yeah, he gonna get him a date. He gonna get him a woman some kind of way. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wow, bro? Huh? Some kind of way, especially inside of that prison in Angola. She Angola kind of like different from right. all the rest of the prisons because you got a lot of freedom kinda, to be able to do like <laughs> all kind of different shit. things yeah, yeah, you like know what i'm saying so shit. you know you can you can actually kind of like get you a girlfriend you can kind of like yeah, do all kind of yeah, things yeah. inside yeah. that prison right, right. there oh, yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's what i need like me to never be a joy to be thinking about like, how the fuck is this Everybody say that like that be different from everything. Yeah, it really is. Now yeah, they say the feel different on the state. Yeah, it's, it's really it's like really different. different right? You know, there's a lot of things I can't get off into, but you know, it's different. It's the biggest what president in the nation. Yes, like yes, that? yes. It's a slave plantation too. Uh -huh. Right. So I mean, what's bringing y'all peace nowadays, man? Oh you know man, saying? everything. Like being home, it's Freedom. a blessing to be Freedom. free. Freedom. Yeah, you know what, what I'm saying, saying bro? You know, every day a holiday for me. That's what I be saying. Freedom, and they be like, what you mean? I'm like, because I'm free. I was in hell for right. 27 and a half right. years. Yeah. I'm talking about my best day in prison. Don't even look nothing close to my right. worst day out here. Right. Right. I'm talking about my worst day out here. I'm dancing. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Because right. my right. best day in prison, still I still was in prison. Right. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? I'm still on the yard. I still got to go to right. child. I got to, you know, catch my yeah. rack. I got to do all that. Man, right. out here, I ain't got to do none of that. Right. I went you know what I'm saying? I went to jail at 15. They told me I wasn't coming home. My rap sheet said 2032. Yeah. It's 2024, and I've been home almost four years, so you can't tell me what God won't do. Right. You know That's what I'm so saying? You just got to scare the courts. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. right. And right. so with that being said, you know, not just staying the course in prison, but coming home and staying the course too is something. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because like I told you, I did five Josephs. So I've been released before. I right. didn't got out before, but I went back. So what I'm a, what I was going to do different is about doing something different. You know what I'm saying? We got to change the narrative. So, you know, all the effort I used to put into to the streets, I changed that and I said, man, I'm going to put that into doing something positive for a change. Right. Because I got to keep it real, you know, I'm getting old. I ain't getting no younger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I understand today that if I go back to prison, I'm going to die in prison. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Age, like, I don't yeah. have the chances that a 17 or 18 year old got. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't have those opportunities because I'm a five time felon. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just the different the opportunities different. So with that, you know, knowing the, the risk and, 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 and what was at stake, it makes you want to move different. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, if you up. don't want to move different, then you don't want nothing different. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm a person today that I want something different. I can say, yeah, I know how to live in jail. I ain't had no problems in jail, but do I want to be there? No, that's not somewhere I want to be. You know what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't wish that on my enemy. You know what I'm saying? That's not. It's, it's not. It's not for human. It's not for humans, brother. You know what I'm saying? It's not somewhere you know you would want to be. Yeah, has to be around people y'all is. You sit down and you know. And Man, listen, bro. When I went to, to when I hit the when I hit Winfield, bro. I ain't never not to cut you off. I ain't do no jokes. Right. Damn. So you so would. I'm you, way younger. Yeah, right. So y'all tell you got to think about like, what I'm saying. You make me think about what I'm saying yeah. because yeah. when I went to prison in 20, when I hit the when I hit Winfield, after I got my time and they sent me to Winfield, I met a guy that was 20 years old. He had 40 years flat. He had shot a dude. Somebody jumped him at a parade. He yeah. shot the dude. 
to get him off him, the bullet went through that dude and hit another dude and killed two people. They gave him 40 flat. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm, I'm talking about this dude because he had 40 flat. He was 20 years old, but he used to run around the prison like he was going home next week. And I was like, bro, you don't want you, the law library over here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know, you got some dudes in prison, bro, that's really 20 years old and all they want is a cell phone and some mojo. You know what I'm saying? All they want is that sack. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because they feel like they lost. But 95% of all cases got a loophole in them. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's about, you know, you 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 got to put some time and some effort into trying to, to be better. Just because you got 40 flat don't mean you're gone. You know what I'm saying? Don't mean it's over. I got another brother that had 40 flat, but he ain't give up. And after 15 years, he's now home. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't give up, but he was he was taking the steps and taking the action, and he didn't give up on himself. He didn't just say, well, man, they gave me 40 years over with. You know right. what I'm saying? Sometimes right. you got to, they gave me 15 flat. Yeah, I went up for parole and made it, but if you look up my name, I'm in a law, law book. Yeah. I actually appealed my case and won. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I I let the appeal go because they gave me the parole date. That's all I wanted. Right. You know what I'm saying? saying? I wanted a, a chance to get parole because this is what y'all promised me in court. But when I got my rap sheet, DOC said you ain't getting no parole. Let me ask y'all this: You think it's you think it's the same way now? No, you know, that, like that's got a loop. No, that was my next question. Didn't they change the law? Well, you had to do the whole bunch of laws. Y'all had to do right now. Ain't no parole right now. Yeah. I'm telling you. What you think is that, like what you said, how you said it's always got a loop. So this is the thing. Most people, this is what I found out in, 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 you know, he might be able to give you some more on this, but this is what I found out in researching and doing. I did all my own law work. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not a law law librarian, but I would get with people like him who knew what to do. He ain't got to do the rip for me. Just show me the format. Just tell me. I mean, I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? He ain't got to do the habeas corpus for me. Just show me the format. I'm going to do it. So I say that to say this. Like, you can be in, you can go to prison right now, brother. And if you went to prison right now, it's still about, about you as a person. You know what I'm saying? And about what you want. You know what I'm saying? But for me, I feel like if, if for me to give, to, to be on, to be in prison and want to see, like, man, damn, I wonder, you know, how this would be, you know, because prison put me in a, in a fucked up mind state, I can say that, you know what I'm saying? Prison had me, like, I didn't want to give up, but there were days where I was like, man, bro, like, you know, because before I got the relief that I want, I got shot down a times, too. You right. see what I'm saying? Right. So, I say that to say, when I was going through the law library and I was trying to find my way out and try to file these different writs and things, I found that most people believe that they can give their case back on something like uh, a little small technicality. You can, but most cases, this is how you win your, it don't go, all right, boom, I ain't had the drugs on me that was over there. You know what I'm saying? Man, I'm going to beat this. What you need to do, the first thing you need to do to get grounds to give your case back is find out where they violated one of your civil rights, find where they violated one of your constitutional rights. You know what I'm saying? If you can find out what one of your constitutional rights was violated inside the procedure, the process of your arrest, you know what I'm saying? Through the whole course of the process, then that's the first step to trying to get up here. It don't mean you're gonna win it. You just starting the process. Now, you know what I'm saying? This. How long it took y'all to even get on that though? You know what I'm saying? Like, All right, for well, y'all, nigga, young going, as y'all relates, young y'all. Yeah, as it relates to me, when I was it, when I was in a parish, bro. When I was in a parish, right? I'm 18. I'm 19 years old. I'm in a parish. And kind of like, I'm looking at like the younger, you know, they got guys, they trying as adults, juveniles. So these dudes like 14, 15, they coming on the tip with us, we're on the juvenile tip. So I'm looking at these little brothers and I'm like, man, what the fuck going on? Right. You know what I'm saying, bro? And I can't say right there, my mind all the way changed, but that's that started the change, right? So when I got to Angola, bro, and I got to the law library, you know what I'm saying? And dudes really like showing me how to... Um, use this law library now i'm reading all kind of different books man it, I, I was like kind of like about 23 or 24 and a light went off in my head was like man hold up bro you need to find out what's going on you need to find yourself bro so i went on a journey to find who i who i was right so on that journey i realized that man you know what i ain't gotta prove nobody nothing to nobody i already know what's happening i already know who i am you know what i'm saying so from there you know what i'm saying my mind was kind of shifting to, you know, man, what I got to do to get out of prison? You know what I'm saying? I know what kind of mind I got, so now I got to ask the right kind of questions to the right kind of people. So I was on that journey. I didn't care who you were. If you knew what I wanted to know, I'm coming pull up on you. I'm coming ask. I'm coming see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Now, not only learning it, applying it. 
learn how to fly, bro. Next thing you know, bro, I'm in the law library, bro. I'm helping brothers get out of prison. Man, you don't have any brothers I help get out of prison? No. Man. Why, <laughs> like, why in prison? Why? How man, you get that, how you man. Get that gig like? How you, how you because I started learning the law. Yeah. I started learning what's going on. I understand how it was. Then I, you know, in prison, know what I used to say? I said, I'm versus the state of Louisiana. Because <laughs> I felt like they took advantage of us, yeah. but we didn't know what was going on. But right. now I know what's going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm like, all right. Let me see what's happening. I learned how to litigate. I learned English. I relearned English. Yeah. I learned how to litigate. I learned how to read cases. Right. You know, it's a difference being, being in between knowing how to read and knowing how to read a law case. Right. That's two different things. Right. That's right. like total different things. You know what I'm saying? So I started look, teaching a law class to the younger brothers that was yeah, coming to prison. I started teaching the younger brothers critical thinking. Yeah. I started teaching them effective listening. Right. I started teaching them transaction analysis. The art of transactions, you know what I'm saying? I started, you know, anything that I was getting, I was giving it back to the younger brothers right. or the other brothers inside the prison because I know one thing, bro. If you're a young guy, say I'm 30, you 20, your mind works better than mine. Your, your mind works faster than mine. Right. So if I give you this, ain't no telling what you're going to do with it in the next three years. No. You know what I'm saying? Right. No. So that means the brothers that's coming behind you, you're going to be able to give it to them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You're going to be able to feed me also. Right. You know what I'm saying? God said feed the people. You know what I'm saying? So that means us feeding off each other. Way, bro, right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, right. You know, like, like you said, see, when, when, when I found myself in kind of in a little position when I was at Winfield, man, you know, this prison, they had a lot of, it was having a lot of stabbings, a lot of juggings, a lot of stabbings. Yeah. Rampant, rampant. And, um, <clears throat> Some of the administrators had came, I'm Muslim, you know what I'm saying? Some mm -hmm. of the administrators had came to our iman and asked us to form a little, kind of like a non-violent thing, right? So we we came together, a bunch of brothers, about four, about four or five of us came together and we grabbed another four or five brothers and there was eight of us collectively together. And we started to stop the violence uh, little movement, right? right? Inside the prison. And what we did with this is we wound up having a big old, uh, a big old thing in the auditorium where we had speakers, you know what I'm saying? I, I got to sing a song, you know, rap a song that I wrote about it. Yeah. It's just different like thing, but <clears throat> this transpired into me becoming a tutor, helping 15 dudes get their GED, you know what I'm saying? Teaching yeah. substance abuse, teaching anger management. Like I taught all these self-help programs in prison. After once they told me I had a parole date, I put myself in position because I can't sit here and say that I wasn't, you know, doing some other shit. You know, I had a cell phone and was fucking with this and that too. When I got in position, man, I put all that down. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, they passed the laws at 17. The beginning of 18, man, I was a tool. I was going up and down the walk. I was helping dudes get. I contributed to 17 dudes getting their GED, what they can now call a high set. You know what I'm saying? After I took anger management, I taught anger management. After, yeah. you know what I'm saying? After, I, after, uh, after I took substance abuse, I taught substance abuse. I taught living in balance. You know what I'm saying? So I was teaching these self-help programs and things like that. And what I found out is that there was a lot of young brothers that was looking up to me from afar that I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, damn, OG, like, what's up? You know what I'm saying? And I found out that I had influence on people that I didn't know I had influence on. So it was my, it was it was up to me to use my influence either in a positive way or a negative way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, some of these cats looking at me and they look at me with the dreads and the goals and the tattoos and they feel like, well, damn, you know, if, if you G'd up and this and that, but you could change, I could see you yeah, doing yeah, something yeah. different, then I might, it might be all right. You know, sometimes you got to let these dudes know it's all right to be, you ain't got to be hard all the time. Yeah. You ain't got, you know what I'm saying? Like everything ain't about being just, you know, a G and I'm this and that. It's all right to be cool. It's all right to read a book. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You ain't got to be too cool to read. You know what I'm saying? Like just different things like that, bro. You know, knowledge is information, brother. You know what I'm muscle, saying? Muscle muscle tough, look at this too. Man, listen, knowledge right. is information, <laughs> you know, and I heard him say something. He was talking about how he was teaching reading and how, you know, it's a difference between reading and reading, you know, a law book. Man, listen, bro, comprehending what you read is key. Because I know a lot of dudes that can read, but they can read that paragraph, and then when you ask them what they just read, they don't know because they didn't comprehend it. They understand and can pronounce the words, but being able to comprehend what you read and understanding how to attain and use this information that you just that you just gathered is a whole completely different thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because having knowledge without using it, it's just it's what's what's the good what's the if I have the knowledge, 
if I know how to ride a bike but never but never get on a bike to try to ride it, then me having a knowledge and ability yeah. to ride that bike is useless. Right. You see what I'm saying? Me taking the time out to learn how to ride this bike, then I need to take the action to actually ride the bike or else all the effort I put into learning was useless. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing in life, man. We got to take the same effort and put it into these positive things, you know what I'm saying, and just spread the, spread the word, man. That's what we're trying to do right now. That's what we on right now, man. The Muslims are pretty powerful in prison? Muslims. Most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. I mean, you know, like, I ain't become Muslim in prison. You know, I've been Muslim for 23 years, but oh, I, I ain't become Muslim in prison. But you have, you know, a lot of dudes that... They know, circle. I mean, yeah, you know, the, like Muslims the is world. big, but a lot of dudes, you know, you got dudes in different prison facilities that channel to the Islamic group because they feel like they're strong. Because yeah. it's for protection, for different reasons, you know what I'm saying? Everybody that's Muslim, not Muslim, because they sincerely believe in Allah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Inside the prison. Trust you know what me, I'm saying? I know. So, you know. Uh, they went that world for protection, proud. You know yeah, what I'm you saying? Know, got a lot come with that. Uh, <laughs> best so. Best so. Yeah. So what's the connection with the music I'm hearing about, man? The, the record label. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I, 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 I call that... See, I was listening to your interview with right. Lil Yao on my way here. Okay. That's how I got a lot of the information. I'm like, wait, wait, they, they doing music too? Yes. I thought you were just music. a motivational speaker. but Right, you know, no, bro, And no. then I saw you on Boss Talk rap, right? but I'm like, man, yes. they can rap too. What's going on? Like, what's going on? They're doing rap and everything. Oh, I got some balls, bro, but I do it for recreation, recreational purposes. But we got a uh, label, me and Bosco, Forever Money Music. You know, we got an order to be the K book, the creature, you know what I'm saying? You know, I got nephews that rap, bro, that used yeah. to rap, that's rap, still rap, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, music, I love music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I talk to rappers down there every day, all kind of rappers in the city. Yeah. I talk to them, I'm, 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 we be texting or going back and forth, because I'm always trying to inspire them to keep going, right, to keep right. doing what they do, you know what I'm saying? I love Some music. You know. Man, I know all kind of wide data it is. You know what I'm saying? Free BMG Pound, that's for sure. BMG Snoop. I'm talking about um, Exotic Fat Boy, that's my little partner. You know, I mess with him. I'm Cino, Code 3 Fool, Trey 7 Half. Man, it's just so many of them little brothers, man. I'm cool with you. You know what I'm saying? Dirt Life, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Dirt Life is from, um, Shrewsbury. from Shrewsbury, man. Oh, yeah. That's my people, yeah. Shrewsbury. That's my people. That's my bloodline. Stand up Dirt guy. Life, I real stand-up guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, he real, real stand-up guy. You know what I'm I saying? I thought he was from South Dallas. Yeah, no, nah, oh, definitely. I, uh, I don't know how to ask a question. What question you, you just want? Asked, or you just told me. Y'all just told me about what made y'all do it, right? Right. It's your part of the book. Right. I asked y'all how long, but like, how long it took y'all to really be like, all this shit down, street book. Not yeah. even, not even you getting occasion, but like, man, I need to see what's on my case. Oh no! Or some look, ah, nigga tripping and then he was like, man, hold on, let me slow down, I'll think about it. Cause you know, you been right there going. I probably would like, I probably me for me, I probably was like about twenty five. How long was you in it? Like, I was in like, you? I was in about seven years. I was in about seven years. I was at Camp J. How long you think? About two. Yeah, I was at Camp J on and at Camp J in prison, it's an extended lockdown in Angola. Uh -huh. Right? So you in the cell like twenty three hours a day at Camp J, right? Yeah. Um you you know might you might be on a tip with like twelve other thirteen other guys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But look, this this shit here is a real mental game at Camp J. You know, they don't have <laughs> Camp J no more. It was right. a real mental game right. uh -huh. at Camp J. They, they they keep you locked up for twenty three hours, boy. You got a lot of time for yourself. You got a lot of time to think by yourself. You have a constant conversations with yourself, the reality of your situation. So I find myself at Camp J sitting in the cell saying, man, you know what, bro? Man, I'm this I gotta I gotta change some of this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm so saying? So you wasn't around other inmates. Yeah, you? I'm around other inmates, but they in sales too. Oh, uh, you know, you get to come out for fifteen minutes on level two. You only get you only get a chance to come out for fifteen minutes. If you ain't going on the yo, you just come out to take a shower for fifteen minutes. You're going back in your cell, yeah. right? Yeah. So you got everybody on a chill. You know they're throwing feces, they're throwing piss. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm talking shit. about it's crazy. I'm yeah, talking about really animalistic yeah, yeah. living. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. I heard, I heard Boosie talk about that. Right, shit. right. Boosie ain't lying. Man, look look at she, you he was living back there. Like it ain't even working. Yeah. Right, he was living back there, so he ain't lying, bro. Yeah. I was up there when he was back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, that was like he said he was on what dead road tell something like that. Huh? Yeah, they got a tell on that road. During that time, that road was different. Yeah, but now it's kind of like different too, because 
um that rule got its own like whole of different part, but it, you know it's like different. Yeah. They uh-huh. make you sit in that piece of wood over there. No, no, you. And you don't go straight down. Go to that rule. Oh yeah, if you convicted in a parish, like if I was in Orleans Parish, and I'm convicted of, 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 of a charge yeah, that yeah, carried the death penalty, as soon as that happened, after that you come straight, you going straight down Golden. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? You going straight down Golden, you going to put you straight on that road. The headlights on the bus. Right, mm-hmm. definitely. So, is there any other positive influences out there you would like to collaborate with? Uh, knowledge, man, everybody. Anybody that's doing something right. positive, man, we want to collaborate, collaborate with them. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, feed the people. It's not in the I want to be a conduit for box. people. It's like, all right, now we know you. We can yeah. introduce people to you and what you're doing. Right. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, I know brothers that's in all kind of different positions inside of the city. So that's what I do. When a brother pull up on me, like, look, bro, this is where I'm at. Oh, that's where you at? I know somebody who's doing that right now. Hold on, let me call him. Right. Call up, brother. Look, here you yeah. go, man. Look, I got this partner, bro. He's trying to do such and such or whatever like that, bro. Yeah. You know, it's just about people helping people out in the smallest ways, bro. Right. It ain't got to be nothing right. big. You ain't got to pull your all into somebody to help them out, bro. It might be one small right. thing that you might do for a person that can change his entire life. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm into that. So I just did that. They got people that really be sitting there, though. In the back, how you say you saw people or dudes in there watching you from afar and really want to do it. Right, right. Yeah, take you to walk up your face. And I say that right. because a dude right. came to me personally, right? Um, it was me and another partner. We used to be talking to this this particular instance was about it was about me taking my goals out. I was like, man, I'm thinking about taking my goals out, right? The young dude told me, he said, man, don't take your goals out. Like, wow. He said, I don't know what it is. He said, I've been talking to you and I've been talking to Rose. You heard me talking to all. He said, but it's something about when you talk, it's like I just feel it. He said, I ain't going to say it got, got to do with your goals. He said, but that's just a part of you. Right. He said, because it's a part of you, when you talk, he said, dude, tell me the same. We had the same conversations. But you have the ability to make me feel it a little right, more. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, it's just, you know, you know, it'd be different coming from, you know what I'm saying? When he told me that, it was kind of like, damn, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, he let me know, like, you know what I'm saying? Listen, yeah. you know, basically, he was letting me know, like, man, I'm going to listen to what you say. You know, yeah. I be hearing dude, but I don't, because don't feel like he can I got, a, I got, a, right. I got another partner, I don't want to really say his name, right? But his auntie always tell me this. She said, man, I don't know what it is about you. I tell him all the exact same shit. Soon as he call you and you say the same thing, he listen. Right. And I told her, I said the difference is that he relates more with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're more on the mom and T side. You know what I'm saying? He relates more right, with me. Right, so right. coming from me, the way I'm gonna deliver it to him, I'm gonna deliver the same message, sure. but I'm gonna deliver it to him in a manner that he's gonna be able to receive it. You run You're not gonna sell it to the seller. Yeah, right? You know what I'm saying? So, so you know, right? You know what I'm saying? So older now, and our generation coming up, how we get older now, that's two different worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. two completely different worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Completely yeah. different worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Completely yeah. different worlds. Yeah. Completely different yeah. worlds. How old you are? 26. 26. When I was 26, it wasn't even like this. You know what right. I'm saying? It was, it was, different. It was way right. different. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to let y'all take it over with some words of wisdom for the people. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just do y'all. All right, bro. God said feed the people, so it's lunchtime. Be on the lookout for that at all times, man. Every time I open my mouth, I'm trying to influence somebody positively, bro. So if I come your way, man, just check me out. If you need me to come your way, reach out to me, man. I'm on Instagram. Fee underscore DA underscore PPL, man. Get at me. It's all good. Same thing you, over man. here, man. You already know, man. We just want everybody to, to be on a positive note, man. Anything we could do to help, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't, like, we reachable. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't feel like you can't reach out and touch us. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could get in my inbox. You can get it in his inbox. You know what I'm saying? What's your you know, I'm, I'm uh, at Bosco underscore forever seven. You know what I'm saying? You also could tap into the Ad Forever Money music page. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can reach us through any of these three platforms. Feed the people, Bosco Forever 7, or Forever Money Music. You know what I'm saying? And you, just because you tapping into the Forever Money Music page don't mean you can't tap into that and be on some positive shit. You don't got to be talking about no music. You know right. what I'm saying? But be talking about some positive. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. We, 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 we all about helping. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. any kind of way. You know what I'm saying? It don't got to be with music. If we can do something, if we in a position to help, that's what we on right now. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, do I do want y'all to pay attention to our upcoming artist, BDK. I do want y'all to tap into the Fever Music page. I do want y'all to also tap into the move of Young Steppers. We got about the Young Steppers 1 is out now on Tubi. And we got Young Steppers Part 2 on the way. And that's executive produced by Fever Money Music. 
Oh, y'all put that together? Yeah, we put the oh, wiggin' Y'all gotta give me a cameo or something. Y'all let me do something. that, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if I'm getting slammed on the car or something by the police. I need to send a big shout out to to my homie, man. This guy, the genius, man. She put this shit together without her. This really her vision, you know what I'm saying? She allowed me to, you know, she gave me the opportunity. She gave me the opportunity to come in and step up into executive role, you know what I'm saying? So I appreciate her for that. Shout out to Rest Kyle. Shout out to Dirt Life, man. You know what I'm saying? got some big doors he opened up for us. Shout out to the BRL podcast, man. To right. Breaking Records Def- Live, man. Def- you know, Def- Nuff and Nell, man. We fuck with them the long way. They've been opening up some doors for us, man. Shout out to everybody that's helping us. Because right. just like we trying to help people, they got a lot of people out here that's helping us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I just right. want to give a big shout out to everybody that's helping us, bro. You know what, what y'all saying? got trying on the calendar got. coming up, bro? Anything on the calendar? Right now, we, we right we, now we ain't got nothing like immediate. But immediate. in January, man, we going on the road with Dirt Life, man. We going to um, Chicago. Yeah, we, and then we going to Florida with him, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Man, to do a little stuff in Jacksonville, yeah. Florida, you know what I'm yeah. saying? He's taking us with so two dates know, on yeah, this tour, man. We're going to do a little lightweight stuff, you know? We got other things in the cooker, though, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, we got some other stuff yeah. in the cooker. Just stay that. tuned, man. Yeah, you know what I'm stay tuned. All right. That's what it is, man. That's what it is. Live from the floor of the projects. Right. Definitely. Feeding yeah, the people, school. man. It's lunchtime, man. Y'all tap in, man. Definitely. One of the building. Hey, we got them shirts on deck, too, man. Y'all don't forget to tap in, man. Feed the people, man. Tell them where they can find these at, man. And feed the people. Feed the people. Feed the people got them. Feed the people got them, baby. Good day. Buy school forever, seven forever money. Hit any one of us. You can't get him, hit me. We got him. Right. Y'all stay blessed. All right, bro. You stay blessed. Hit him with that one more time. Feed the people. God said feed the people, boy, so it's lunchtime. It's lunchtime. What?